she is an author and a speaker. So we cannot wait to hear what she has to say with digital intimacy and the future of brands and interaction. Thank you for that lovely introduction. I'm Linda Ritchie, and thank you for joining me today. I've been working with brands for many years now, focused on helping them figure out what to do when new emerging technologies were really impacting on their market. I was part of the first internet and digital marketing revolution in the late 90s, back when it was the Wild West, and we were figuring all sorts of new things out. And I'm still here, excited to be part of this next revolution. My abstract promise to talk about augmented reality, digital intimacy, and the future of consumer brands. We're going to discuss and game out how these new realities will change the way brands and individuals relate. Many of my fellow AWE speakers are going to be presenting you with case studies, how-tos, and all sorts of other amazing examples of how immersive tech is being used today and where it is going tomorrow. Tony Parisi, who just presented in track three, is doing incredible things at Unity and bringing bleeding edge 3D AR to the retail environment. My approach today is a little different. I'm gonna be asking a lot of questions with the intent for it to be thought provoking and more importantly, question provoking. I don't have all the answers, nor is there a specific roadmap at the end with a template to follow. For this discussion, we're gonna focus on the future of AR, a world where AR is ubiquitous, always on and personal. Don't let your imagination be constrained by how we're gonna be accessing these AR experiences. Look beyond today's hold up the phone form factor. For a few minutes, think about this future and its implications. With AR, the whole world becomes a canvas owned by the individual and an opportunity for brands to engage. So treat the next 15 minutes as a thought experiment with the end result being that you go back to your teams and start talking about the implications that are relevant to your brand. Reframe the questions and recontextualize the discussion. Let's ask some new questions on what a brand might look like when reality is the media. So down the rabbit hole we go. We truly are on the cusp of a revolution in technology and human experience and marketing and brand. And I know that language sounds awfully familiar for those of us who've been working in digital for the past 20 some years. Uh, mobile phones were gonna change everything. Broadband, social media, smartphones, they were all gonna change everything. And to a large extent, they did. But over those 20 some years, we also talked a lot about brands giving up control. We went from mass media to content marketing to social media marketing and now influencer marketing. And we had to get a lot more creative about being flexible with our brands along the way and letting go of a lot of control over the message. We all thought, talked, and worked on brand experience and experiential branding. Many of you listening have worked very hard on creating experiential brands, but AR is truly different. There is no channel because it's all the channel. A person's day-to-day -day experiences become the medium. A brand can engage, connect, and maybe build a relationship through that lens, but it will be completely on the user's terms. I think <laughs> this little story captures it well. There are two young fish swimming along and an older fish swims by them. He nods sagely and he says, hello boys, how's the water? And the two young fish swim on, the one looks at the other and says, what's water? That's where AR is gonna take us, ubiquitous, always on. It's gonna be the water that we little fishies are swimming in so integrated throughout our daily lives that we can't imagine navigating our day without it. Much like smartphones are now, but so seamlessly that it's taken for granted. We will be the artists of our own AR painted worlds. Want to spend the day with everyone looking like sea monkeys? Done. And by the way, that is my favorite slide ever. <laughs> uh, a huge fan of the Wild West? Don't really that aesthetic on your day. Not a fan of a brand? Block any mention and have the brands you do like placed there instead. This is the digital intimacy I'm talking about. We will be able, as consumers, to hold the brands we prefer close in our spaces to paint our world on our own terms. This is a critical point. AR is a technology that is personal and intimate at the same time. Personal in the sense that it gives the user new capabilities and experiences. Intimate in the sense of ownership and personal agency. The user owns the experience. They control the form 
and the formats that they interface with. So there are multiple dimensions where augmented reality will play a role in our lives. For today's discussion, I want to touch on just six categories where I think AR will play a big role when it comes to brand and discuss how each of these might fit into someone's life. For brands, this is an opportunity to become indispensable with bite-sized micro moments of brand experience that can become indispensable to their lives. Very utilitarian. Honestly, people will not know how to navigate the world without it. Two is signal and self-expression. As humans, we are constantly using self-expression to signal to others through our choice of clothing, what we drive, where we live. Brand is a big part of that self-expression. With AR, individuals get another tool to enhance and extend those signals. It's both a platform for outward self-expression or tribal identity and an opportunity to signal to one's tribe. For brands, this is an opportunity to enable identification, to create moments of recognition and feelings of belonging. Three is visualize. Most people have a very difficult time visualizing how something will actually look. AR's strength lies with giving people the opportunity to see what's not yet reality. For product brands, this is an opportunity to help customers make choices that are better for them and eliminate mistakes in the purchasing process. Think things like returns, which will plunge once people can see what they're buying before they do. But also think of it as an opportunity to build aspirational brand affiliation. You can be part of someone's life far before they might be able to actually purchase your product or need to. Or is educate. Humans are inherently curious. What is the history of that building? Who painted that? What happened here 100 years ago? AR makes it possible to weave education and instruction in an entertaining and engaging manner and contextual to the time and place you are standing. For brands, this is an opportunity to become indispensable in the context of now. Five is entertain. We like to be entertained. Entertainment can be passive and it can be active. We can sit back or we can lean forward and jump in as people did with Pokemon Go when that came out. AR will make it possible to be a star in our own life movie, gamify our everyday humdrum activities, or become an actor in our favorite TV show. I absolutely love what Bitmoji TV has done by inserting people's own avatars into their cartoons. That is the future. For brands, this is an opportunity to empower fans and build a deeper relationship with customers. Now everyone can go through their day as Superman, Wiley Coyote chasing the Roadrunner when they're really just buying milk or Eon Flux. Turning the world into a massive multiplayer game as Ingress did will make the humdrum a lot more fun. And personally, I think experiencing food shopping as food shopping is an epic magical quest sounds like a lot of fun to me. Six is socialize. Where would we be without our tribe? AR will ensure that we'll never be alone unless we want to be. We'll have our virtual gaggle of friends, both real and digitally created, to talk to, ask questions, giggle with, run ideas by, everything we do now, except they'll always be with us. For brands, this is a space to be part of that tribe with digital influencers, embodied representations of our brand, and a living, sort of breathing, fleshed out interactive version of what our brand stands for. AI-driven brand interaction, access through an AR portal onto the world. With that as a background, let's bring this to life by taking you through a short case study. Meet Chelsea. I'm going to be following Chelsea through a typical near future day, exploring what that might look like in practice through the lens of the six categories where AR will play. Chelsea is a 32-year-old woman, and she likes fitness and is a vegetarian. And I know that doesn't only mean carrots, but I laugh. Uh, she is an animal lover. She has two dogs. She's very conscious of her carbon footprint, and she actively chooses to live her life in what she considers an eco-friendly way. She recently read The Alienist and is now fascinated by turn-of-the-century, 20th-century New York. A typical day in Chelsea's future looks something like this. She wakes up. Her personal AI-driven concierge, Aria, greets her with a cheery, morning. Chelsea gets on her Peloton bike and joins in the class. As she listens to the Peloton coach, she flicks through the curated headlines that Aria is presenting her. After her ride, she decides she's slightly tired of the leggings she's wearing, and she asks Aria to show her some options. Aria knows that Chelsea is a fan of Lululemon and Athleta, and favors Fuchsia. So pre-selects five. There's two from Lululemon, one from Athleta, and one from Peloton. They recently launched their own line, and one from a brand she's never tried before, Prana. 
Chelsea asks Aria to show her what they'd look like. Aria presents four, five full-size avatars of Charitsley wearing the options into her living room. Chelsea can't decide, so asks Aria to put it out to her workout friends network. In her right field of view, she sees the votes coming in. She asks Aria to make sure that her digital Peloton brand rep weighs in. She's really proud of her top 20% status and wants to hear what the brand thinks. Chelsea gets dressed and decides today's going to be a New York circa 1900 kind of a day to reflect her new interest in that period. The alien aesthetic today, please, Aria. She grabs the dog leashes and admires the view across the street. That ugly billboard is now removed and takes the dogs on an Edwardian themed scavenger hunt. She meanders towards her favorite cafe. Once there, she glances at the menu. Aria has highlighted the vegetarian options and blocked any mention of meat and asks Aria to overlay the echo impact of each item over it. A woman's head across the room lights up. A Peloton Century Club member, Chelsea, is duly impressed. She nods in recognition to the other woman, who nods back and smiles. On her way home, she admires the Edwardian aesthetic that Aria has chosen. Where did this slides come from, Aria, she asks. Aria responds, it's the In the Shadow of Gotham series that just hit Netflix. I thought you'd appreciate it. Later that day, as Chelsea relaxes in her living room, she asks Aria to play that Gotham series. Aria says, this is a murder mystery set in Edwardian New York. It's the latest hit. Chelsea's living room becomes a canvas for her own personal theater in the round. She calls up her contact list in front of her field of view. Come join me, she says to her best friend, Janet. And Janet's avatar appears next to her on the couch. So as you can see, we've set the table with a few hours in life of Chelsea. We see how brands can be part of her AR experiences in a few discreet ways. For me, this raises so many interesting questions, particularly for brands. And because of the short time we have, these really are only the tippy top of the iceberg, but there are so many. For one, how does my brand get discovered in a world where users have most of the control over what they perceive? And what kind of experiences can my brand create or facilitate, partner with, one that grabs people enough to keep me included? How does my brand forge an emotional connection and build a relationship when every consumer decides what their experience will be and one misstep could result in being completely blocked from a person's life with no second chance? If all experiences and choices are moderated, <laughs> how does someone experience serendipity? I've wondered that a lot about the Pandora model. How do you experience new things if everything is controlled? What does brand affinity and fandom look like when customers are experiencing the world defined by their own terms? Think about a brand like Nike in a world where outward signaling of brand fandom isn't seen because others have superimposed their own brand preferences over what they see. What does a brand do when ad blocking can be applied to reality? We've already seen a few AR ad campaigns that replaced one brand with another. And what if as a consumer, you can do that all day long with whatever you want? Blocking a competitor's brand from a consumer's view seems to be one of the most interesting opportunities for marketers. And I'm sure it will be mentioned quite a few times at AWE. But while many seem intrigued by the opportunity to do so, particularly in the packaging aisle, I've yet to see a discussion around what response is possible if I'm the brand being blocked. The rabbit hole goes really deep once you start really thinking about the implication. You're gonna to need to ask some really difficult questions and have some hard conversations around what does your brand mean in Chelsea's world? And the hard conversation is how do you become and stay relevant? Your brand is a living, breathing thing with a past, a present, and a future. Think of how your brand can help make people's lives easier, prettier, more exciting, more connected, more shareable, more amazing. Think about creating moments of connection. Reframe the questions and recontextualize the discussion. What does brand relationship mean in a world that is intangible and how will you shape it? Thank you for joining me. Let's answer a few questions. Moments Hi. of connection. Hello, Linda. That was excellent. Hi. Thank you. I loved your last question. I was almost going to ask the same one, but we'll go to the chat. Yes. And the chat has been pretty busy today. I'm sure you've seen. I'm good. Um, yeah, I was watching a bit, but I, I wanted to just see what, what you thought were the most, uh, the ones that picked out. They always all do because there's always an angle. And sometimes what I think isn't so great is a 
could make you come out with a great answer. So, uh, well, here, this one was digital intimacy is increasingly perceived by consumers as privacy invasive. How yeah. do we create personally compelling AR experiences while protecting individual privacy and preventing privacy pullback? I thought that was yeah. a good one. It's a huge area that I am very fascinated by. Privacy is something I didn't talk about in the thing, but yeah, it's a big one. I'm a huge privacy advocate. I have a lag. Is that okay? Yeah. No, you're good. Okay. I'm, I'm a huge privacy advocate. So, yeah. Oh, Do you want me to answer? Um, okay. I'm, I can't yes. Agree. Um, what do I think is the answer? I think that privacy is something that generation, generationally means different things to different people. And um, while I am enormously cognizant of how we define it in our age group, I look at my 10 year old nephew and realize that he is that fish swimming in the water and he does not think about these things and he won't because it'll be like breathing to him. So I think the definition of what privacy is will change. It's not necessarily a popular answer, but I, I do think that's the case. Um, I do think that companies are gonna have to work hard to make sure that there's a barrier between uh, the, the, the what they gather from people isn't just for fun, like it has to have purpose. And I also think that users should have agency over their own uh, information. Um, you know, that's, a, that's another area of privacy. So um, that kind of turns the, you know, the model of, of information as a income generator to companies on its head a bit. But I think that people need to own their own data ultimately. Absolutely. Um, what, what role do avatars play in a brand presence in the spatial world? Yeah. How do we create a personal connection? I wrote half, half what I wrote for the book that just got published in February was about uh, artificial humans and uh, in, in artificial intelligence and humans and brands and how they will become the face literally of brands and the interaction becomes the brand feeling. Um, I think that it's, it's going to be a stretch for a lot of companies to fully flesh out the 360. What does it, what does our brand stand for? What does it mean? What is how does that translate to interaction, which is really what it's about. Um, and I think that we're going to have our own digital concierges who will be navigating a lot of that for us as well. Um, but the future of, you know, brands is, is fully fleshed out avatars and us interacting with them. So part of what I'm trying to do is get companies to think about what does that mean for them? I can't, right. as I said in the beginning, I don't have a template. I don't have a, there's no stock answer to that, but it's a working through, it's a working you know, work through with brands, what does that mean for us and how does that mean translate to interaction? I, I in my head, it almost seems close to retail, uh, uh, to restaurant design, because they're the only, they're brands that ultimately understood what it is to be completely immersive in a 360 environment. So in a way, it's similar to that. It's how you create an experience that is a reflection of who we are and, and what consumers expect of us and what we do if we miss that. <laughs> Yeah, of course, right. Um, I know yeah. this kind of touched on the. This kind of touched on uh, Samantha Wolf asked how you balance the need for personalization, um, mm. with issue of privacy, in a world painted of data. Great question, Samantha. Uh, um, but yeah, the how about the personalization side? When Pandora first came out. Okay, and all of a sudden we could have music that was picked for us. And I was fascinated with that because it's an algorithm. It's a very simple one versus what we're talking about. But all of a sudden I could have a personalized experience. And my big worry about that is what does it get so personalized that there's no serendipity? And I don't know if I wanna live in that world. So I think it has to be a balance between the two. Um, you know, I, I, I like some odd music. I freely admit I like didgeridoo, didgeridoo trance and Viking weird drum music along with regular stuff. I would have never known that in a world that's so curated that it wouldn't have ever come up, right? And so I think that personalization is gonna be important. I think that also you need to know who you are to have personalization be exactly right. So you're gonna grow up in a, in a world that's gonna be testing different things and then ultimately it'll rock your algorithm as it were. Um, and I think it needs to walk a line, you know, and, and time will tell, testing will tell when it's gone too far. But again, my 10 year old nephew was grew up in a world where he's never had to compromise. He's never had to watch a TV show that wasn't on exactly when he wanted the episode he wanted. He's, he's never had to deal with things that just were the way they were. 
So I think personalization is going to become so normal to us that if it isn't, it's going to feel wrong and it'll feel like we won't like it because we're just used to it our way, you know, kind of egocentric, actually, in a way. Yeah. It's what they're used to, right? Yeah. I mean, um, you're used to having everything the way you want it, how you want it, when you want it, in the manner you want it. You know, it's a nice world. <laughs> I was just going to say, that's pretty good way to... <laughs> Growing up, I I might say that I'd like a, a I digital coming assistant. Home from right now. School and, you know, whatever was on TV, that was on TV. Like we didn't have a choice of episode. My little two year old nephew, I watched him with his little pinchy fingers on the on the iPad. He was picking already what he wanted, when he wanted it, you know, how he wanted it, yeah. which one he wanted. So I look at you him and I think, you know, what, or, you know, which Oprah, ep, you know, what you should like grow up like that. Yeah. And I think, you know, brands are going to have an interesting time with that because they're going to have to understand the intersection between what their brand is and what it stands for and what it represents for an individual, because that might be different. And then understanding what that means for, you know, how does that translate into an experience? Moments connected. Yes. It's <laughs> little what it's all moment. about, right? <laughs> I, Thank you yeah. so much for such an intriguing talk. I really appreciate your time. And that's it for the sales and marketing track today. And what a way to close it out. Moments connected. <laughs> Thank you.